What's up guys, it is the T-Ball and I am back with another video. Before I start, if you guys could hit that like button and subscribe for more NBA, Brooklyn Nets, and Jeremy Lin videos, your support is greatly appreciated as we, as we are trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the, at the end of this year. So if you're not sub, be sure to hit that sub button as your support means the world to me. So tonight we're going to be going over Jeremy Lin was clutch as the Brooklyn Nets beat the Sacramento Kings 109-100. to So... Some key box score stats, Jeremy Lin with 17 points, 5 assists, 2 rebounds in 20 minutes of playing time. He was a plus 10. He was 5 of 10 from the free throw, oh, from the field, 2 of 3 from 3 point range and 5 of 6 from the free throw line. Brooke Lopez with 24 points, 8 rebounds and 1 block. Karis Lovert with 13 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists and 3 steals. And for the Sacramento Kings... Ty Lawson with 15 points and 9 assists, Buddy Heald with 16 points off the bench, and Tyreek Evans with 15 points and 5 rebounds off the bench uh, as well. So, uh, a quick recap, the Nets came out on fire in the first quarter. They had 15, a 15-point 15 lead over the Kings with about 7 minutes remaining. They were hitting everything, their threes, their drives, their open, you know, open two jumpers. And then when Lynn came out and the bench came in, they just lost the lead. And after the first quarter, they were only up by four points. So this was mainly by, I hate to say, but Sean Kilpatrick, and um, sorry, uh, and Isaiah Whitehead. It just seems like they they're not too good at moving the ball, especially Kilpatrick specifically. He seems a little selfish on the offensive end as he he tends to put up bad shots. And I forget how many points he had today, but he was I'm pretty sure he missed most of the shots. And I think Kilpatrick, even with Lynn back, is still struggling mightily and I saw I was reading on Nets Daily um, some comments they're like they're basically roasting Sean Kilpatrick and his uh, selfishness and to to an extent I agree because Kilpatrick has been you know it just doesn't seem like he he's uh, willing to find open passer and it looks like he has a lot of uh, tunnel vision so hopefully Kilpatrick over the summer at least if he's still with the Nets could you know learn from Kenny to try to find the open guy for the open shot instead of taking bad shots contested shots and just learn how to you know move the ball a little more so that's kind of off topic but um, in the second and third quarter the Nets would hold steady with a five to nine point lead throughout those two periods and in the fourth quarter the Kings to start the fourth got on a run they got close I'm pretty sure they were within two points at one time but Throughout the fourth quarter and throughout every Kings run, the Nets would always have an answer. They would either score a bucket or when the Kings were going on another run, like about to, you know, say about to tie the Nets, the Nets would always have a defensive stop, which is pretty rare for the Nets because they're a pretty bad defensive team. And um, it just seemed that the Kings w would never really beat the Nets in my mind throughout the game. as It just seemed the Nets would always... Uh, come back and always have an answer for every Kings run so how was Jeremy Lin so Jeremy Lin was awesome today he had 17 points on an efficient 5 of 10 shooting from the field he was 2 or 3 from 3 point range and 5 of 6 from the free throw line so he shot very well from the field 3 point range free throw line overall he shot very well he was very efficient he still looks a bit sl slow on defense as you know this is this is just Jeremy's third game since his third hamstring injury but um which is still boggles me how he got three hamstring injuries in one season I mean that's so ridiculous but that's off topic um yeah so he just looks a little slow but once he gets into the flow a little more you know I say within you know definitely a couple more games he'll definitely uh look a little faster with faster in his steps his movements and he'll uh he'll uh, look like the old Jeremy Lin also, he seemed a bit hesitant driving to the rim. I don't blame him, as I said in my previous videos, as Lynn doesn't want to injure or hurt that hamstring with the Nets not really having much to play with. They are basically eliminated from any chance of a playoff spot. So it'll be best if the Nets and Jeremy Lynn just, you know, take it a little slow, make sure no more injuries going in to the offseason and just start off strong for next season with um, the whole team hopefully being healthy with new, you know, NBA caliber players and hopefully and hopefully the Nets could make a, a potential 2018 playoff run um, So yeah, let me just see my notes real quick Yeah, and specifically I want to point out on a fast break layup 
when uh, it seemed like Lin was semi open, but with the Kings defenders quickly catching up to him, as I told you um, like a minute ago, that Lin was looking kind of slow throughout the game. And it seemed like when Lin went up for a reverse uh, layup, it was very similar to the play where he injured his hamstring against the Hornets on in uh, December, which was very scary as Lin, he missed the layup, you know, pretty badly, I guess. Uh, he, I don't think he even hit rim. And then he fell down. It looked like he just fell down flat on his butt. And hopefully he's he's okay. He played the rest of the game. He played the rest of the, uh, you know, a couple minutes. Then he came back in the fourth quarter, which is the first time Lin has came back in the fourth to play since, uh, since returning. So that's great. And hopefully Lin is just perfectly fine, okay. And hopefully he can be healthy throughout the rest of the season. Lin was also very clutch. He had two free throws, and he had um, six points in the fourth, but that's not really the reason why Lin, uh, Lin was clutch. Not just his six points, but when Lin came back into, into the game, it seemed like he was a very calming presence. Every, you know, every player on the court at that time when Lin was on the floor just seemed like they, know, they knew where to be, and it seemed like Lin was directing the offense in a way that, um, oh, sorry about that. Um, Lin was directing the offense in a very smooth manner. It was a very calm manner. No one was getting, um, you know, frustrated and um, just overall, it just seemed like Lin, when Lin's in the game, the offense is flowing. Everyone gets their touches and especially Lopez. Um, in the first quarter, by the way, Lin was um, finding Lopez for, he found Lopez actually on, um, I'm pretty sure it was a jam or was it a layup? It was, you know, somewhere in the paint for Lopez's 10,000th and 10,001st points, which is, and he has the second most points in uh, Nets history, and he's very close to first place. So congratulations to Brook Lopez on his achievement. Good for him, he's a great guy, great player. So yeah, that's just, that's basically an overall wrap. The Nets and Jeremy Lin finally got a win after 16 straight losses, I'm pretty sure. So it's just great to see that. Sorry if my voice sounds like a little low. Um, I don't want to wake up anyone as it's very late. I live, you know, in New York, if you guys didn't know. It is currently 1.25 a.m. and I, it's a school night and I uh, should sleep pretty soon. So uh, definitely wanted to get this video out. Very happy with the results. Great that Jeremy Lin played well. He's healthy. Um, um, yeah, he's healthy, hopefully, um, for the rest of the season. The Nets played well. Smiling faces at the end of the game as the Nets got the W. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Be sure to leave a like if you did and subscribe for more NBA Brooklyn Nets and Jeremy Lin videos.